This is a Gabosh G700S, and you can buy this plane for a cool $54,900 off of Craigslist. Welcome back to the channel guys. Today we're reviewing the Gabosh G700S. This beautiful plane was made available to me by my friend Matt out of Apopka Airport, commonly referred to as X04. This beautiful plane is now called a Aero AT4. Now this plane was found on Craigslist and Matt has it listed in some other places but Craigslist has rolled out a new aviation section where I found amongst other things a L3 trainer being parted out, a Sirius SR20, a aviation World War II glasses, goggles, and drones. Shouldn't they be in the hobby section? Anybody? Now, first thing you're, you're probably wondering, like I was, is uh, what the heck does a gabosh stand for? Oh my gosh, it's a gabosh. Does anybody say that? Is that a thing? Maybe we should make it. <laughs> anyway, so gabosh stands for go big or stay home. Now, when the G700 was first introduced, it went for $107,000 to $124,000. Uh, this plane is built for grass strips. It's uh, known for its caster and nose wheel. It's uh, adjustable propeller, and it's carbon composite that makes it so light. Getting in and out of the G700 is fairly simple. Using your left foot, you put on the scratch pad there, and with help of your right hand, lift yourself up. Right foot goes in first, followed by the left foot on the floor of the plane. See? Simple. Now plop your butt down and go fly. Now inside this plane we have our standard six pack with a turn coordinator, airspeed indicator, a stall warning light above the airspeed indicator, a VOR indicator, artificial horizon, a directional gyro, altimeter, a vertical speed indicator. And to arrive at this we have the engine monitor. the fuel pressure indicator, a fuel level indicator, and the RPM indicator. And what I think is the coolest attribute here is the dual throttles that are interconnected. Now, to the right of the instrument panel, we have our GPS, Garmin 496, radio and transponder. To the right, you'll see our circuit breakers and our hour meter. Down below, we have our switches, which include a battery generator, an alternator fuel pump, avionics master, and our lights. We have our strobes, position, landing lights, taxi lights, and instrument lights. To the right of those, 
We also have our dimmers for the instrument panel and the cabin. Now, moving on down to the central console, you see that we have the ignition switch here. We have the choke. We have also cabin heat, cabin vent, oil heating, and right to the right of my knee, if you see the little red knob, is the parking brake. Now I am showing you how to operate the flap. It's a manual flap extension with a 0, 15, and 40 degree marks. And so left of the flaps, we have a trim tab. What I thought was really neat about the central console was that the trim tab, tab actually had a window. So you can see where the takeoff and nose up and nose down directions are. Now we're going to show you how to turn on the gabosh with your toes on the brakes and your hand on the throttle. Also, the coast is clear. We're going to flip our switches, the battery alternator and the generator. And then we're going to turn the key all the way to the right. Clear. Listen to that road tax. <laughs> Another surprising feature for the G700 is the fuel capacity. I learned that the uh, plane holds about 18.5 gallons and with a burn rate of about 3.8 gallons per hour, that's close to 5 hours of flight time. That's great for a light sport. I was extremely impressed with the handling of the Gabosch G700 on small airport runways. Uh, the Rotax 912S engine uh, with a three-bladed prop is a perfect combination for this plane along with the carbon composite makes for an excellent ride. Um, if you would like any more information on uh, purchasing this plane please DM me below and uh, I will get back to you as soon as possible with the contact information. One of the other things that I really like about the G700 is the takeoff distance and landing distance. Now, I wasn't able to experience firsthand, but I've been told that takeoff distance is about 380 feet with a landing of about 656. Holy cow, that's awesome. Now, to be a completely honest review, I want to tell you about some of the downsides. One of them being the luggage capacity. It's a light sport. I know you are going to get a lot, but 66 pounds is the max. So I feel like either you're taking a lot of luggage and no passenger or passenger and no luggage. One other con of the G700, as you see here in this picture, is the canopy jettison lever with the red knob. That's number one. Number two is the actual lever for locking and opening the canopy. For my own preferences, I think they're too close for comfort. But from the owner, Matt, he tells me that he's never gotten the two mixed up. So this may just be my personal con. As always, thank you so much for joining us today on Cleared for Takeoff. I hope you enjoyed this review. If you have any more uh, planes you'd like for me to review, please leave in the comments below. And don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more awesome videos from Cleared for Takeoff. Blue skies and tailwinds.